will it ever be practically possible for humans to go to even our nearest star system, Proxima Centauri, within the reasonable lifetime of a single human being, even after cryogenic sleep? That's a good question. And there's a related question which asks whether, yeah, it asks when will cryogenic sleep become a reality? Okay, so let's deal with the first question first. Will it ever be practically possible for humans to go to Proxima Centauri? So the fastest spacecraft ever launched is the Parker Solar Probe, I believe. It achieved a speed of 0.06% the speed of light. So based on that speed, it would take about 6,000 or so years for a spacecraft to reach Proxima Centauri. So with this constraint of speed with this speed constraint that we have right now, it is not possible to reach our near star system Proxima Centauri within the span of one human lifetime. It would, but if one were to send, hum, send human beings on, on a trip to this star system, it would take at least 6,000 years. And one would need to have a number of people, at least 100 people or more, in order to ensure that they keep producing offspring in the spaceship so that when the spaceship reaches the star system, there will still be humans there to, to visit this uh, star system. So there have been several studies done about this, and it was found that it was estimated that one needs at least 98 people, at least 49 male female pairs in such a starship in order to ensure survival all the way to that place, to that star system over 6000 plus years. So definitely it's not possible within one human lifetime. Uh, there is currently a program called Starshot Initiative, if I'm not mistaken. It aims to develop a technology based on solar sails, light sails, and accelerate these uh, sails and small spacecraft to about 15 to 20% the speed of light. So what the concept is that is that it will launch about a thousand nano spacecraft, very small spacecraft of the weight of a few grams only. And these spacecraft will be powered by solar sails, by light sails. So these light sails will be impelled by the power of lasers. You can shine lasers on, on these light sails and accelerate them to about 15 to 20% the speed of light. So if one does this, then these, these space probes will be able to reach Proxima Centauri in about 25 to 30 years. So that's what one could possibly do in the next decade or so if one could develop the technologies, which should not be that difficult. So one can send robotic spacecraft, robotic space probes to Proxima Centauri in the next half a century or so and get some images back. It is possible to do that. But it's not possible to send human beings within one human lifespan to Proxima Centauri. Now about cryogenic sleep. When will cryogenic sleep be possible? So let me answer first, what is cryogenic sleep? Cryogenic sleep is essentially freezing a living human being and putting the person into uh, suspended animation of sort. So the person doesn't age. The person is nearly frozen or maybe fully frozen. So that is cryogenic sleep. It's about uh, nearly freezing a person to slow down all the biological processes and to bring the temperature down to almost zero, just slightly above zero, and hopefully extend the lifespan for several centuries. And when you reanimate the person, the person comes back to life and it's almost like you're back to normal. That is the concept of cryogenic sleep. It's a science fiction concept. Right now, we are nowhere near achieving uh, this technology. Uh, I don't think it's being seriously tried even right now because there are many problems when it comes to cryogenically uh, lowering the temperature of a human body. First of all, if you lower it too far, then ice crystals will form. Our body is more than 70% water. When you freeze water, ice crystals form. These ice crystals are ve have very sharp, jagged edges. So at the cellular, cellular level, they will basically puncture cellular membranes and they will reduce your internal organs to mush. So when, especially the human brain, which is full of water, 
So that would render the human being unviable for reawakening. It would basically destroy the brain and destroy the organs. And if one were to keep the temperature above the freezing point, then we don't really know what happens. I mean, some experiments were done by the Japanese in the Second World War, about how long a human being can survive such temperatures and what are the effects. But and and that data was acquired by the Americans, and that data is still classified, I'm sure. So we don't know where this, uh, where where we have reached technologically, technologically, in uh, trying to achieve this specific goal of cryogenic sleep. It's right now completely in the realm of, of science fiction. We don't know when this technology or if this technology will ever be achievable. So as of now, we can send robotic spacecraft to Proxima Centauri within most likely the next half century. And we will be able to see what the star system looks like. It's about 4.24 light years away from us. It's currently the, the closest star system to us. And there is this planet, this exoplanet that has been discovered. It's called Proxima Centauri b. It is an Earth-like planet. It is in the habitable zone of the star. It's nearly Earth mass. It's slightly larger, maybe two or three times larger in terms of mass than the Earth. So one could, one would like to send probes there and send back images and data from there. So that could most likely be possible in the next, within the next 30, 40 or 50 years. So that is the stage we are at right now. Right now we cannot do interstellar travel. It will be a great thing just to send human beings to Mars and bring them back safely. That is the first step that we are trying to achieve after sending human beings back to the moon. So that's where we are right now. It's baby steps.